NASA just gave Blue Origin $3.4 billion as SpaceX's backup, but this might be the biggest mistake in space history. While Elon Musk launches rockets every two days, Jeff Bezos has managed just one orbital launch in 25 years despite burning $1 billion annually. One launch. Now they're promising eight launches this year, but insiders say they'll be lucky to hit two. So why is NASA betting America's space future on a company that's failed for two decades? Let's dive right in. Here's what NASA hoped you'd never find out. That $3.4 billion contract to Blue Origin? It wasn't about creating competition. It was pure desperation. Behind closed doors, NASA executives were panicking that America had become dangerously dependent on one man, Elon Musk. But here's the bombshell nobody saw coming. While NASA was writing that massive check, Blue Origin was quietly collapsing from the inside. And the warning signs were everywhere. Jeff Bezos stood in his rocket factory, promising eight launches for 2025. Eight rockets rolling off the production line like his Amazon packages. The world's richest man couldn't possibly fail at this, right? Internal sources reveal a catastrophic truth. Blue Origin can't manufacture rockets fast enough to meet even their own drastically reduced targets. The same company that revolutionized package delivery can't build a single rocket on schedule. Their second stages, called GS2s, are gathering dust in warehouses, incomplete. The boosters face identical delays. This isn't a temporary setback. This is complete systemic failure of everything they claim to master. Those eight promised launches? They've already admitted they'll hit maybe two. That's a 75% failure rate before they even attempt to fly. But here's what's really shocking. NASA knew this when they signed the contract. While Blue Origin struggles with basic manufacturing, SpaceX just unveiled something that shouldn't be physically possible. Their new Raptor 3 engine produces 560,000 pounds of thrust while weighing 170 pounds less than the previous version. More power, less weight. It violates everything we thought we knew about rocket engine design. How? SpaceX literally reinvented what a rocket engine looks like. The Raptor 3 appears so stripped down that Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone. This couldn't possibly be the entire engine, he declared publicly. But it was. SpaceX eliminated thousands of parts by integrating everything into seamless, 3D printed components. While Blue Origin adds complexity, SpaceX removes it entirely. And here's the kicker. This engine burns fuel twice for maximum efficiency using full-flow stage combustion, a cycle so difficult that Blue Origin couldn't master it in 25 years. SpaceX perfected it and made it look routine. But why did NASA ignore this massive technology gap? Blue Origin's BE-4 engines were supposed to be revolutionary. Methane and liquid oxygen. Cleaner and more advanced than SpaceX's original kerosene design. On paper, they were superior. Reality told a different story. These advanced engines faced development disasters that pushed ground testing into 2021 and 2022. While SpaceX was launching paying customers every few days, Blue Origin couldn't get their engines to fire reliably. When New Glenn finally launched in January 2025, it failed to land the booster. The rocket reached orbit, but reusability, the technology that makes rockets affordable, remained completely out of reach. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Raptor 3 achieved something Blue Origin's engineers said was impossible. Burning propellant twice in the same engine cycle without melting. The temperature differential would destroy conventional materials, but SpaceX developed secret metallurgy with exotic names like SX-500. How did NASA miss such an obvious technological superiority gap? The answer is more disturbing than you think. Blue Origin hired over 10,000 employees, nearly matching SpaceX's 13,000. But this number exposed their fundamental misunderstanding of rocket manufacturing. SpaceX grew their workforce organically alongside launch tempo. More flights demanded more people. It was growth driven by actual productivity. Blue Origin did the opposite. They built a massive bureaucracy around virtually zero output, an army of employees with nothing meaningful to accomplish. The inevitable result? Mass layoffs. 
Over 1,000 people cut in February 2025. The official reason? Bureaucracy overtook progress. Translation, they built a company designed to fail. But here's the question NASA should have asked. If Blue Origin can't manage basic workforce planning, how can they manage rocket production? And why didn't NASA's due diligence catch this obvious red flag? NASA faces what experts privately call the SpaceX dependency trap. America's entire space program depends on Elon Musk's decisions. If he shifts priorities, changes his mind, or faces technical setbacks, American space access dies instantly. NASA needed alternatives. But instead of developing genuine competition, they threw money at the only other company with a billionaire willing to burn cash on rockets. Here's what they discovered too late. Money can't buy competence. And Blue Origin is proving this in the most expensive way possible. But the real shock comes from what NASA officials privately admit. They knew Blue Origin was failing when they signed the $3.4 billion contract. They signed anyway because admitting America's space dependence was politically impossible. Blue Origin's strategy shifted from innovation to litigation. In June 2024, they filed FAA complaints demanding restrictions on SpaceX's Starship launches, citing environmental and safety concerns. Industry insiders recognized this for what it was. Desperation. When you can't win through engineering, you try winning through lawyers. Elon Musk's response was brutal. Sue Origin trended globally. But behind the mockery lies a devastating truth. Blue Origin admitted they can't compete technologically. This reveals their real strategy. They can't outbuild SpaceX, so they're trying to slow them down legally. It's the strategy of a company that's already surrendered. How did NASA not see this coming? And why are American taxpayers funding a company that actively sabotages American space innovation? SpaceX launches every two to three days with 97% booster landing success. Booster B-1067 has flown 28 successful missions. Blue Origin can't land a booster once. SpaceX targets 170 launches for 2025, and they're ahead of schedule. Blue Origin promised eight and will achieve maybe two. That's not competition. That's embarrassment funded by taxpayers. But here's the number that should terrify NASA. SpaceX generates revenue from every successful mission. Blue Origin burns cash on every attempt. One company builds sustainable business. The other builds sustainable losses. The technology gap isn't narrowing. It's becoming mathematically impossible to close. Elon Musk sleeps in factories during critical production phases. He understands engineering challenges at molecular levels. When problems arise, decisions happen instantly. Jeff Bezos hired Dave Limp as CEO in 2023 to fix operations while remaining largely absent from daily decisions. When your founder won't commit fully, why should employees? This isn't about management styles. It's about fundamental commitment to success versus commitment to image. NASA bet $3.4 billion on part-time leadership competing against obsessive perfectionism. How did they expect this to end? SpaceX's Starship represents generational breakthrough. Fully reusable, 100 to 150 tons to orbit. Mars refueling capability. Raptor 3 engines are the most advanced ever built. Blue Origin's new Glenn uses traditional expendable design with limited reusability. Even if perfected, they're building 2018 technology while SpaceX develops 2030 solutions. This isn't different approaches. It's different technological eras. Blue Origin competes with SpaceX's past while SpaceX creates the future. Why did NASA ignore this fundamental reality? The answer reveals their biggest mistake yet. SpaceX operates on fail fast, learn fast. Build, test, break, improve rapidly. Real-world data drives everything. Blue Origin follows perfect before flying. Endless simulation, analysis, ground testing. It sounds safer but contains a fatal flaw. Space can't be simulated. While SpaceX learned from actual flights, Blue Origin perfected computer models. While SpaceX mastered reusability through real landings, Blue Origin studied theoretical scenarios. Result, SpaceX turned rocket science into rapid iteration. Blue Origin turned it into analysis paralysis. NASA chose analysis over action. Why? 
Internal documents suggest NASA knew about Blue Origin's systemic problems before signing the contract. Manufacturing bottlenecks weren't temporary. They were fundamental design philosophy failures. Engine problems weren't technical challenges. They were unsolvable design flaws requiring complete restart. Workforce issues weren't growing pains. They were symptoms of broken company culture prioritizing bureaucracy over results. NASA didn't make a bad investment. They knowingly bet $3.4 billion on a company incapable of delivering promised results. Every Blue Origin delay creates additional delays. Every missed deadline pushes milestones further out. The failure cascade started years ago and now accelerates beyond control. Late engine development delayed first launch five years. Manufacturing bottlenecks delay everything indefinitely. Failed recovery attempts prove they're nowhere near SpaceX's capabilities. Meanwhile, SpaceX accelerates. Cheaper rockets through successful landings. Proven systems through rapid turnarounds. Increased funding through revenue generation. The gap doesn't just widen. It becomes impossible to close mathematically. China develops reusable rockets. Private companies worldwide build launch systems. American space dominance isn't guaranteed. NASA's backup plan can't function as backup. When your alternative can't perform basic functions, you have no alternatives. Blue Origin's failure rate means America's space access depends entirely on SpaceX. That's not redundancy. That's single point of failure with $3.4 billion price tag. Here's what NASA officials privately admit but publicly deny. They created artificial competition by funding incompetence. They threw billions at Blue Origin not because they could deliver, but because political optics demanded alternatives to SpaceX. The result? American taxpayers funded a company that actively hinders American space progress through lawsuits while failing to deliver promised capabilities. But the most devastating revelation is what happens next. Sources close to NASA reveal they're considering doubling down with additional Blue Origin funding rather than admitting the mistake. NASA bet America's space future on a company that's failed for 25 years. They ignored obvious warning signs, dismissed technology gaps, and funded litigation over innovation. The shocking truth? They knew Blue Origin would fail. They signed anyway because admitting SpaceX dependency was politically unacceptable. But here's the twist that changes everything. What if NASA's real mistake wasn't choosing Blue Origin? What if it was something far more shocking that threatens everything we thought we knew about America's space program? So here we are. NASA threw $3.4 billion at a company that launches once every 25 years, while SpaceX launches every few days. Blue Origin burns cash while SpaceX generates revenue. One company sues for restrictions, the other builds the future. The real shock isn't Blue Origin's failure, it's NASA's willingness to fund incompetence over innovation. They chose political theater over American space dominance, but this story isn't over. China's developing reusable rockets. Private companies worldwide are advancing rapidly, and NASA's backup plan just proved it's no backup at all. What happens when America's space leadership depends entirely on one company? What happens when political decisions override engineering reality? And most importantly, what other backup plans is NASA funding that we don't know about yet? The space race isn't waiting for Blue Origin to catch up. The question is, will America's space policy catch up to reality before it's too late? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, because this conversation is just getting started. The Raptor 3 can literally blow itself up in 10 milliseconds. Elon Musk just dropped this bombshell truth. SpaceX's most powerful engine, 280 tons of thrust, has a deadly startup flaw. One tiny timing mistake and boom, total destruction. But here's the shocking part. This nearly killed SpaceX's Mars mission. So what's this insane timing sequence that's so dangerous? And how did SpaceX solve this nightmare before it was too late? Let's dive right in. August 2024. SpaceX drops a photo that makes the entire rocket industry lose their minds. The Raptor 3 engine looks impossibly clean, like someone stripped away 90% of the parts. 
Tony Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, publicly calls SpaceX liars on Twitter. No need to exaggerate by showing a partially assembled engine. Every aerospace expert agrees. This has to be fake. Four days later, Gwyn Shotwell ends the debate with one devastating video. That exact same fake engine firing up with a perfect blue flame. Her brutal caption, works pretty good for a partially assembled engine. The industry goes silent, but nobody knows the terrifying secret hiding behind that clean exterior. Then came the confession that changed everything. Replying to a post on X, Elon Musk dropped a bombshell that sent shockwaves through SpaceX. Very complex startup sequence. Insane timing precision is needed to avoid blowing up the engine. Wait, the world's most advanced rocket engine can literally explode during startup? The CEO of SpaceX just admitted their masterpiece is a death trap? This wasn't some minor technical issue. Musk was revealing that every single Raptor 3 startup is a game of Russian roulette with a 10 millisecond trigger. You blink your eyes in 300 milliseconds. The Raptor 3 requires timing precision 30 times faster than that human blink. Miss that window by even a few milliseconds? The engine doesn't just fail, it detonates. But how can the most powerful rocket engine ever built be this close to self-destruction? The answer lies in what SpaceX calls full-flow stage combustion, the most dangerous way to power a rocket ever attempted. Most engines work like a garden hose, simple, predictable, safe. Raptor 3 works like a controlled nuclear reaction happening 1,000 times per second. Here's the death sequence. During startup, two massive turbo pumps must spin up to speed that would shred a car engine. These pumps force liquid methane and oxygen, both colder than the surface of Mars, through microscopic channels at pressures that could crush a submarine. Then comes the killer. The pre-burners must ignite in perfect sequence within 10 milliseconds. The fuel ratios have to be exact. The pressure curves must match perfectly, and the timing cannot be off by even a microsecond. What happens if something goes wrong? SpaceX engineers have a term for it. Hard start. That's their polite way of saying catastrophic explosion that sends metal fragments flying at supersonic speeds. One SpaceX engineer described it to me. Starting a Raptor is like trying to light 33 sticks of dynamite simultaneously while they're all connected by